Hi everyone, I'm Mary Ellen with Headwaters Science Institute and I'm back with another Thursday Science Challenge for you. Today we're going to look at worms. Worms are cool. They have no arms and no legs and no eyes and yet when they're exposed to light they move away from it. They're like amphibians that they're cold-blooded and they breathe through their skin and if they dry out they'll die. The longest worm ever found was 22 feet and was found in South Africa. They're great for the soil. They churn up the lower layers and bring them up to the top soil and keep it all mixed up and healthy. And they secrete a slime on them that has nitrogen in it, which is really great for the plants. So where do you find worms? Do they like it under the trees? Do they like it out in the sunny areas? Do they like soft soil or do they like compacted soil? Are there different kinds of worms? So looking at my yard, I gotta be honest, I can't remember the last time I saw a worm. So I picked this experiment because I wanna see if I actually have worms in my yard. Um, I am going to predict that in my yard, I'm gonna find them more under the trees than out in the sunny areas because I'm thinking that's gonna be too bright for them. So go take a look at your yard and come up with a prediction of where you think you're gonna find worms. This is what we're going to need for our worm hunting. There are two ways to look for worms. First, you can guess where you're going to find them and look for worm castings, which are small pellets of soil, and then just start digging, hoping you're going to find them. Or you can summon them to the surface with a really cool method. It's called mustard worm extraction. What you're going to need is some dry mustard powder, a gallon jug or container, a quadrat maybe that you made in our first lesson, a piece of string will work, a measuring tape, and then another little bucket of water to rinse off the worms once you find them. Okay, here's my study plot. I found a nice tree to put it by since that was part of my prediction, and I laid my quadrat down. I also did a string border so you could see how you can do that if you don't have your quadrat. One side reads about 30 centimeters. And now I'm ready to summon my worms. I'm gonna take a quarter cup of the mustard powder, even it off, and I'm gonna put it in my gallon of water. And then I'm gonna shake it up really good so it's all dissolved. I also have my mustard, my uh, worm bath at the top. When they come out, I can rinse them off. Don't worry about your worms. The mustard water doesn't hurt them. It just irritates their skin, so they're moving away from it. I'm pouring the very last of my mustard water on my quadrant and I've taken a long time to do it. It's taken me about 10 minutes to get it to soak in really good and slow. Alas, I do not see any worms. I have seen nothing come up out of the soil. But no worms is still data, so it somewhat supports my hunch that my yard doesn't have very many worms. Uh, I know that this area is very dry despite all this vegetation around. We can go a month or more without rain, so it's possible that this area doesn't support many worms. I think my next area of investigation is to find a water source, a creek, or a lake and see if I can find some worms there. Well, just because I haven't found any worms yet doesn't mean you're not going to. So if you found a worm, let's take a good look at it. You'll notice that there are rings or segments along the length of the worm's body. These help it twist and wiggle forward. The head of the worm, where its mouth is, is more narrow and you'll notice a whitish swollen band right behind it. You can figure out what species of worm it is by counting the segments from the head to the white band. If you turn it upside down or put it in a glass dish, you'll see the insides of the worm on its underside. Look for a long vessel that's pulsing. That vessel is moving blood through the worm. Can you see what direction it's going? Now look really closely for some hair-like bristles called seta. These help the worm move and also anchor it to the ground. 
These are what make it so hard for a bird to pull a worm out of the ground. If you're lucky enough to find some worms, there's lots of things you can do to study them. You can count the segments to see if you can figure out the species of worm. You can count the number of worms. You can record what color they are and how long they are. And you can predict where you're going to find the most of them. Remember to rinse off that mustard solution and gently put them back where you found them, covering them up with a little dirt. If you have some data, please share it with us. We'd love to see what you found. Happy worm hunting to you!